Hi guys, today I want to film a video that I've been thinking about filming for a very long time. This is a video where I answer your skincare questions. I am a scientist, so I get my skincare information directly from research and I like to pass that along to you guys. And I know that you guys have a lot of questions for me on different products and how they work and how to use them. So I've actually started accumulating a lot of the questions and found that a lot of them could be answered by dedicating an entire video to vitamins in skincare. So today we're going to go through some of the most common vitamins found and used in skincare as well as answer some of your skincare questions such as what do vitamins actually do for your skin and who are they good for how do you get the best results from them which vitamins can be used together and which need to be used separately how do you continue to use a product if you find it irritating but you like the results of it how can the natural oil in your skin be better controlled and what is the difference between topical application and ingestion? Why would you even need skincare if we get vitamins from the food that we eat? If you like the idea of this video and you would like this to be an ongoing series, let me know in the comments down below and ask me any questions you may have and I'll pull from those questions for a future video. And of course, make sure that you're subscribed so that you'll be notified when I answer your questions. So give this video a like and do give it a comment and let me know what you guys think about it and maybe we'll do more of them going forward. I have a lot of your skincare questions to answer here today. Where else best to start than at the beginning with vitamin A? Vitamin A is most often referred to by its common name, retinoid. Retinoids are a group of compounds derived from vitamin A. There are both over-the-counter and prescription products. As this is a group of compounds, there are many different names that retinoid may appear on an ingredients list. Two of the most common ones you probably are familiar with are retinol as well as tretinoin, which is a retinoic acid. If you want more information about the different generations of retinoid technology and how they compare to other cell turnover products such as exfoliants, I have already filmed an entire video where I discuss this topic. So I'll link that one up in the cards as well as in the description box in case you want more information about finding the right cell turnover product for you. Retinoids are probably the most researched skincare ingredients because they show very positive and very effective clinical results. Although there are quite a few different applications for retinoids, there are two main ones. The first is that it is one of the only products which is proven to repair sun and age damage. This means a reduction in the appearance of wrinkles, a reduction in hyperpigmentation, and an improvement in skin smoothness. It does this by promoting cell turnover. In addition to this, it's also a very effective anti-acne treatment. Unfortunately, retinoid is a little bit of a tricky ingredient to use in your skincare routine because it has a side effect called retinoid dermatitis, which some people experience when they're trying this product. One of the questions you guys ask me a lot is how do you actually include this product in your routine if you want the benefits, but you unfortunately find it irritating? My recommendation has always been to discontinue usage of a product that you find irritating. In this case, you can find a different cell turnover product such as an exfoliant if you want those benefits. But if you do love this product and you love the results that you get from it, there is some research to show that reduction in concentration does reduce skin irritation. So if you do find this ingredient irritating but you do want to include it in your routine, you can simply switch to a lower concentration of product. If you're using this product as an anti-acne, it's important to know that you need to continue usage of the product to treat the acne. There is always an underlying cause to acne. And although retinoid is an effective anti-acne treatment, it really treats the symptom, not the cause. So as long as you continue to use retinoids, you will see results. But as soon as you stop using retinoids, the acne will return. The application of retinoids makes your skin especially photosensitive. So it's really important to use a sunblock when using retinoid products. In previous videos, I did mention that some of the long-term studies show that there may be a correlation between skin thinning and retinoid application. Since a lot of you guys asked me questions about this, I did a lot of research into this and it turns out that it's most likely linked to this increased photosensitivity. So this means that people who use retinoids over a long period of time but are not consistent and careful with their sunblock are potentially prematurely aging their skin. This increased sensitivity actually lasts several days after applying the product so it's really important that you're very consistent and careful with your usage of a sunblock when using retinoids in your routine as long as sunblock is applied after using this product it doesn't appear that there is any other link between prematurely aging and cell turnover products so that means that they're safe to use as long as you're careful with your sun protection 
For this reason, it's also generally recommended to use them at night so that your skin is not exposed to sunlight when it's at its most sensitive. High concentrations of retinoids can have negative impacts on fetuses, so it's really important not to use this product when pregnant. Exactly where the cutoff between high concentrations and safe concentrations is currently unknown, so it's generally recommended to not use this product if you are either currently pregnant or expect that you may become pregnant. B vitamins are actually a group of vitamins, so we're going to be talking about the ones which are most beneficial for our hair, skin, and nails today. So let's start at the beginning with vitamin B3. Vitamin B3 is commonly called niacinamide. This is a very common and very popular skincare ingredient. It has many different applications, some of which include its anti-inflammatory, therefore anti-acne properties, as well as improving skin texture, reducing hyperpigmentation, and even some early interesting research that it may reduce sebum production. This was a particularly interesting study for me to read because it was performed over two sister studies, one of which was in Japan and one of which was in America. And the results for the 100 Japanese participants over four weeks was different over the 30 Caucasian American participants over six weeks. Even though this research is quite interesting and quite exciting, especially because you guys ask me about solutions for reducing oil in your skin naturally, this could be a good solution. It's too soon to tell. It's very interesting that the results were different considering this was performed under the exact same study. So the conclusion of the study as anticipated is that additional research is required. If oil production is something that you struggle with, with, this could definitely be a product worth looking into. To get the best results of your niacinamide, there is some research that combining it with zinc may boost its effects. Although the research in this is promising, it's a little too early to say for sure, but there's definitely an interesting link here which the research is continuing to explore. Niacinamide is also an antioxidant, which is generally recommended to apply in the morning. The reason for this is because antioxidants help trap these free radicals that bombard your skin throughout the day. Since we don't yet know exactly how long it provides this benefit for, it's possible that you can apply them in the evening and still see the benefits the following day. It's simply too soon to tell. What we do know is that it is important to use a sunblock with this product, so apply it underneath one and give the sunblock time to sink in before you leave your house in the morning. In addition to vitamin B3, vitamin B7 also plays an important role in the health of our hair, skin, and nails. Vitamin B7, which is more commonly known as biotin, plays an important role in promoting healthy hair, skin, and nails. As a result of these benefits, it is often included in supplements. Although there is research to support these benefits, there is no reason for a healthy person to supplement this vitamin as we get enough from a healthy, balanced diet. I also did some research into some claims that over-supplementation of biotin can cause acne by increasing sebum production, but I wasn't able to substantiate and conclusively validate these claims with any research. Up next is a vitamin that I personally love and use every week, which is vitamin C. Vitamin C just might be my personal favorite vitamin. It's often included in the ingredients list under the name asorbic or L-asorbic acid. This product is used to brighten, promote collagen expression, and reduce hyperpigmentation. This makes it great for people with a drier skin type as we tend to suffer from skin dullness. And of course, all skin types can benefit from the increase in collagen production. The reason that this vitamin is often included as an ascorbic acid is because it's best applied at low pHs, definitely less than four. This does make it incompatible with other products such as a retinoid, which is best applied at a more neutral pH, which is why it's generally recommended to include them at different points in your skincare routine, the vitamin C in the morning and the retinoid at night. The vitamin C is most effective when it's combined with the vitamin E. This helps actually better protect against UV damage when you use these products together. It's also important to note that vitamin C is a very unstable ingredient. This means that it breaks down quickly when exposed to oxygen as well as light. So what you want to look for with the vitamin C is a product with a good packaging. You're going to want to look for an opaque pack not a glass or a package that will let light in and also a package that does not let oxygen in. So a pump is an ideal packaging for this product and you're going to want to avoid one that has a screw on lid or a dropper where you're going to expose it to oxygen every time you use this product. 
In addition to keeping this ingredient separate from your retinoids, another benefit of using this one in the morning is that it is also an antioxidant. As with all antioxidants, your skin will be at an increased sensitivity to UV damage, so it's really important that you apply sunblock when using this ingredient and wait the appropriate time for it to sink in before you leave your home in the morning. This next vitamin is a vitamin which is very well studied and established and it's a really great supplement for people that live in areas where they don't get a lot of sunlight or for those people who are experiencing winter. Vitamin D is a common skincare ingredient. It is used to promote cell growth and repair as well as wound healing and it's also an anti-inflammatory. However, the main application of vitamin D is a vitamin D3 supplementation. Vitamin D3 is the same vitamin that is produced by your skin when it is exposed to sunlight. There are unfortunately many people who are deficient in vitamin D, so it is an important supplement. It's especially important if you live somewhere where you're not getting enough sun, for example throughout the winter months or if you live in a polar region. It's also very important for people with darker skin tones. The melanin in your skin not only prevents sun damage, but it also blocks some of this vitamin D3 production that that naturally occurs in your skin. The darker your skin tone, the more at risk you are for vitamin D deficiency. Sunlight is the best way to absorb this vitamin, but if you're not getting enough sun, supplementation is a great alternative. This vitamin is a powerful antioxidant which has good skincare benefits when applied on its own and great skincare benefits when applied with others. The term vitamin E does not refer to a single molecule, but two classes of molecules with similar structures and antioxidant properties. Vitamin E naturally accumulates in the sebaceous glands, which are the skin's natural oil producing glands, and then it is delivered to the skin through sebum, which is your natural skin oil. This vitamin is an important antioxidant which helps prevent UV damage. However, its UV protection is limited as it does not absorb UVA or light in higher wavelengths of UVB. So it should not be used in lieu of a sunblock, but along with a sunblock as an additional defense against UV damage. There may be some other benefits, but the research on this vitamin is currently limited. Its best application is to prevent UV damage, which is best achieved by combining it with a vitamin C. As it is an antioxidant, it is also generally recommended to apply this product in the morning. This is a very difficult question to summarize concisely because our understanding of how vitamins work and especially how they interact with each other is being continuously researched and our information about them is being upgraded constantly. Some of them have a very positive benefit of being used together such as a vitamin C and a vitamin E where they really boost each other and this is where most of the research lies. Trying to find combination of products where you get even better results when using them together. However, some of them are better to not apply together such as a vitamin C and a retinoid. This is because these vitamins operate at different pHs. So if you were to combine them together in one product or use them quite quickly after the other, one or both of them is going to be less effective. So it's better to keep these ones separate. There are also some that we thought we couldn't use together, such as vitamin C and niacinamide, but this was actually due to misinterpreting some clinical results. And it turns out that with additional research, they're perfectly fine to use together, which is an example of how our understanding is continuously being modified and upgraded with continuous research. However, most vitamins are perfectly safe and fine to use together. We just don't know exactly if they are going to positively interact with each other or just neutrally interact with each other. So you can build your skincare routine using all the vitamins that you want to use to get the skincare results that you yourself want to see. Another very difficult question to summarize is why would you need to apply a vitamin in your skincare if you're eating them in your diet? A lot of research on vitamins in skincare actually has to do exactly with this topic. How effective is it to apply a product topically rather than eating it naturally in your diet or supplementing it? The research shows that topical application of vitamins is a great way to supplement your supplements. So what this means is the best way to get nutritional content is to get it naturally from a healthy balanced diet. The next best step is to supplement it orally and then as a backup to that you can apply it topically. The only caveat to this is that your hair, skin and nails is the lowest priority of your body. This means that if you're even a little bit low or deficient, your hair, skin and nails are going to be the ones to suffer from it. So if you really want to boost your skin and get the best skincare benefits, applying them topically is a great way to ensure that you're getting the 
product where you want to see it. We don't yet know exactly how long it takes when you ingest a vitamin to how long you can actually see it in your skin. But some of the research that was performed on, for example, the vitamin D3 secretion shows that it takes around a week for it to actually get into your skin. So if you don't want to wait that long and you want to get skincare benefits right away, applying it topically is a much faster and more direct way to get the product exactly where you want to see it. And of course, the best thing that you can do for your skin and the best way you can deliver nutrients to your skin is to eat a healthy balanced diet as well as supplementing it with a good skincare routine. So I hope that I answered all of your questions about vitamins here today. Do leave any more comments or questions you have down below. And if you like it, I'll try to follow up with another similar kind of video where I answer your skincare questions. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you guys on a future video.